Hello everyone, this is uh, Pastor Alan Hathaway at the Garrison Church of God, and I'm glad you joined us today. I also pastor at the Riverdale Community Church, and our services today at Riverdale we begin at 8.30, and at Garrison we begin at 10.30. So we'd love to have you come and be a part of our services today. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I want to talk to you a little bit about the concept of atonement the price of eternity. There is a statement that if you ask the price of something, you can't afford it. And there is some truth in that uh, in our lives, isn't there? If we need to ask the price of something, it probably is more expensive than most of us can afford. The price of human salvation is the price of eternity. Throughout history, many have asked, what would it cost to be saved? Some have, in ancient cultures, thought it was the price of a firstborn child. Or others have thought it was the price of a lamb. Perhaps it was the price of an entire group of people. Just what would it cost to repair the damage of sin in our lives. What makes something really expensive? One thing that makes an item really expensive, of course, is if it's made out of very expensive items, rare resources, precious metals, or jewels. But there are many things that, well, They aren't worth very much as far as the materials that make them up. Some things are expensive because of the person that handled them. Others are valuable because they represent an ideal or a concept. Other things are valuable because of the great effort that it takes to produce them. Other things can be worth astronomical amounts because they represent a dream or a goal. But what is a life worth? The life of a prisoner, a failed soldier, a sergeant with a wife and family, one prisoner of ten chosen to die. In a camp surrounded by starvation, fear, and brutality, this man had little hope. He was in the most infamous concentration camp ever known. He was chosen to face death because of another man's escape. The commandant had chosen them at random from the body of prisoners. Here in Auschwitz, life was cheap. Prisoners preyed on one another. It was a brutal, ugly place. And the commandant had little desire to be merciful. He simply wanted to teach the other prisoners a lesson that if another person escaped, ten more of them would die of starvation. The man fell to his knees. Please, no, I have a wife. And children. The commandant was unmoved by his request. But a gaunt and weary man stepped from the line of prisoners and walked purposely forward to the commandant. Sir, I am a Catholic priest. I am old. He is young and his and has a family. 
please let me take his place. The commandant was taken back. He said to his soldiers, what did he say? The priest repeated himself, sir, I would like to take his place. The commandant was stunned and looked troubled. The rest of the prisoners were breathless. They expected the commandant to explode in an angry tirade and then have both of the men executed. But to their surprise, the commandant exchanged the priest for the Polish soldier. Father Colby and his nine fellow prisoners were thrown into a bunker that was used to starve prisoners to death without food or water. Instead of the wails of torment that usually accompanied this process, for days the prisoners sang hymns. When finally at the end of 12 days, they, their captors could wait no longer, only four prisoners were left alive. And of those four, Father Colby was the only one that was still conscious. All four of them received a lethal injection. Father Colby, as he died, prayed for his executioners. Francis Zek Jawaninsky, the prisoner who was spared, never forgot the price that had been paid for him. September the 27th is Yom Kippur, or the day or the Jewish Day of Atonement. The word atonement comes from the Hebrew kafar. It is a very broad word that means to cover. Its meaning was so broad in the Hebrew that when the Old Testament was translated into Greek, into what would be called the Septuagint, 200 years before Jesus, they used five different words to translate this one word. One of the words meant purify. Another meant to restore a relationship. We know it as propitiation. Another meant to make holy. Another meant to carry away the offense. And another meant to forgive. These concepts would underpin the ideas of the New Testament writers as they tried to understand what the atonement really meant. For the Jewish people, the high priest would go in every year to offer the blood of a calf a young bull for himself, and the blood of a goat for the people of Israel. That blood was never quite enough. The high priest himself was never quite good enough. And so every year the same sacrifice, the same feeling of incompleteness. How could we make up? for the failures and the sins of our lives. Christ was what made God's atonement possible for us. In John chapter 10, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd that lays down his life for his sheep. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 16, John reflects on this expression of fact by Jesus and says, By this we know love, because he laid down his life 
for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. It is difficult to understand the depth of the price God paid for our atonement. Paul in Romans chapter 5 would, would indicate that one might give up his life for a good man, or one might give up his life for a friend or a relative. But who would give up his life for an enemy? Paul would say that Jesus Christ, when we were yet God's enemies, gave up his life for us, to make an atonement for us. He allowed himself to be put to death in the most humiliating way possible in order to provide redemption and forgiveness for each one of us. That is amazing when you think about it. Reconciliation is a result of realized forgiveness. Forgiveness is something that God provides for us. He provides the idea of removing our sin and no longer looking upon it. But it isn't until we repent and understand the cost of that that we can really be reconciled with God. Reconciliation requires a change of heart where we accept that grace which God has provided. The person who is wronged must give up the right to punish. God and Jesus Christ paid the price of our forgiveness. There is a Greek word that is used to translate atonement. The Greek word is afiareo. It means to carry away an offense. In, in Jesus Christ, God picked up our sins, the weight that we could not ourselves carry. And he took it to the cross and paid the penalty that we should have paid. He was humiliated, as a writer of Hebrews indicates. He took upon himself the humiliation of our sin. Another Greek word is afiemi. It is translated to forgive. But the word actually means to send away out of the sight of. God chooses no longer to consider our sins against us. When he looks at us, he sees the righteousness of Jesus Christ who took our place. These two concepts make it possible for God then to appeal to us for reconciliation. The Greek word that is used here is hiloskomai. It reflects God's appeal to us to be reconciled. In Jesus Christ, God appeals to us and says, be reconciled to me. Come to me. Accept my forgiveness. Accept the fact that I have removed your sin. Atonement has been provided for us in Christ Jesus. But we need to choose to be reconciled to God. To no longer be his enemy, but to become his friend. That only happens, 
when we understand the great price of eternity. We cannot buy our own salvation. We cannot accomplish it by paying a price. We accept it by grace. God wants you to be reconciled to him. I hope you'll make that decision today. Be reconciled to Christ. God bless you. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.